This is from uh, JC. Abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. What does war against the soul mean? This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. That's 11. 1 Peter 2, 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among, among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Well, um, the, the soul is... Um, referring to the soul of someone who's become saved. And when we become saved, we receive a new born again, resurrected soul that is perfect without sin of any kind. Yet God saves our soul, but he leaves our soul in our physical body. And, and our physical body is not perfect. It's sinful. It's corrupt. And uh, and, and therefore, there is a warfare that takes place within each one of us. You know, we, we don't have to look out into the world or, or uh, anywhere but in the mirror. And we're going to see the battleground. It, it's in our own life. And it, it has to do with God's commandments. That's always the battleground. It, it's always over what the Bible says. And the soul, we're talking about someone truly born again. The soul of that individual does keep those commandments perfectly and, and has that ongoing desire to do the will of God. But although the soul is keeping it perfectly, the soul and body are, are, are one. We're not separated. We're, when your soul separated from your body, you're dead. And then your soul goes to be with the Lord. But until then, we're one personality, a mixture of a perfect soul and sinful body. And, and so what happens is the body wants to keep doing what it's been doing our whole life. Ever since we were born, conceived in sin. And, and all the things that we grew up in the world, the, the lusts of the flesh, um, the... You know, we don't have to go through them. We, we all know what they are, and they're all different for each one of us, but it all amounts to the same thing. The body is accustomed to doing what it wishes and, and desires to do, but then after salvation, the Lord, along with this new spirit, is saying, no, no, we're not going to do that anymore. Uh, and, and, and so they're... There's the fight. There's the fight. It says in Galatians, in Galatians 5, um, in verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. So the, um, the, the Spirit, or the flesh is against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh, and they're contrary. They're, you're never going to have agreement. They're never going to resolve the issue and, and so God does not say, now get together with your flesh, sit down and, you know, have a nice talk with it and try to reason with it and, and get it to do my will. Now, what did, what did Robert point out earlier today? Where, what are we to do with the flesh? Or what are we, we pray that the Lord might do in us is to mortify the flesh, to... Um, does it, does it actually say the flesh there? In Colossians 4, in Colossians chapter 4, it says in verse 5, Mortify therefore your members, well it's, just, it's the same thing, which are upon the earth, 
fornication, uncleanness, and ordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And to mortify means put to death. Put to death. Kill it. Really, that's what the word means. And so too, when the Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. Well, when you take up a cross, the Lord Jesus gave us the example, you're crucified and, and you're put to death on the cross. So daily, this is what the Bible tells us to do. It, it, it is not to reason with these things in our life. Look, um, they've had their way. They've had their way. And we still probably experience some of the suffering, some of the consequences, because the flesh has had its way in our life. And, and the best thing possible is not to appease it, not to, uh, you know, be harsh with it. And, you know, I'm not going to give you all that you want, <laughs> but I'll give you some. No, what is the best thing to do to have, you know, give it no quarter? Maybe that's something Mr. Camping used to say. Give it no quarter. Put it to death. It, it is a battle, and if you're engaged in a battle with, um, with someone who wants to destroy you, well, you have to be serious. But... Um, Thank you 